What's going on guys? I'm back with another video. Today we're going to go ahead and get the Dubia Colony cleaning over with. Um, I'm going to just do one colony on video. Um, I'm going to show you the stuff that I'm using. You can go into a little bit more detail when you're cleaning the, cleaning the uh, bins. But this is all I need to do right now. Um, and to go into more detail you just need more, more parts. And I'll show you what I mean right now. Of course, you're going to need your dirty bin of dubia, which I have here. You're going to need two or three empty containers. I'm going to use two. This one right here is kind of dirty, but it don't it don't matter for what I'm about to use it for. Actually, I'm gonna do three bins. I don't remember where I put my sorting bins at. Sorry about this, guys. I'm trying to figure out where I got my bins with the holes in it so I can sort. It was right in front of my face. It was just under something. But these are little store late, little storage containers. And what I did was drill holes in them. Um, I have two different sets. I have one for it with smaller holes in it, and one with bigger holes in it. The bigger holes in it is to uh, sort out the larges and adults. And then once I get the larges and adults out, um, I put it, put the rest of them in here. And I sort the mediums from the smalls. So and when I say go into more details, is um, you can make these holes different sizes to get it, get the um, the sort to the different sizes that you want. Uh, I'm just doing pretty much like a two part. So this one's gonna hold adults and larges. This one's gonna hold mediums and separate the mediums from the smalls. And the way I use these is I set them inside of a, a bin that fits them fits inside of here like that now we have a little container that the, the dubia can fall through and then they go into here and then whatever whatever size that i want to keep on the top of here is not, not going to go through here which will be the mediums in this case so the smalls can go through the little beetles can go through the little worms can go through but the inner frags can go through as well but the medium is going to be congregating in this area. Um, but before I do the mediums, I do the adults and larges. So when I put this one in, the larges and the um, 
adults are going to stay on the top of here. Everything else is going to fall through. So I'm going to have uh, smalls, medium, large, fries, worms, and beetles all down here. And then once I get everything that I need in here, um, sorted and have an adults here, I'm going to put the adults in a clean bin. And they're going to start over a breeding colony. So it's going to be some um, larges in there. So those larges are going to turn into adults while they're in a breeding container. Um, if you wanted to go into more detail on that, you separate the adults from the larges. And the reason you will want to do that is because the larges are still going to shed and it's going to cause a, um, the bin to get dirty faster. But I'm just going to leave it like that um, with the larges and the adults together. That way, um, some of the adults are going to die because they're getting close to the end of, the, the end of their um, life cycle. And then the adults will go to, you know, um, the larger is going to replace those. Excuse me. And you know, if you want to go further than that, you can do quantities like one male to three females or something like that. Um, I used to do it in detail like that, but I don't do it like that anymore. Um, it's a little bit too time consuming, but um, it is something you can do because the males um, eat a lot of the food. So um, if you limit how many males you get in there, the more the females have more food to eat. Um, but yeah, so first, this one go on here. I sort the mediums, um, medium, smalls, and everything else go through and fall through. And then once I get them into here, I'm going to pour the contents in here into a different bin. And then I'm going to put this, this one on top. And then the stuff that was previously in there, I pour on top of here so they can fall through. And then I'm going to have mediums on top of here, and then everything else is going to fall through. Um, I'm going to have dead bodies and stuff like that as well that I'm going to pick off and throw away. Um, but the goal is to get all mediums on top of here um, and everything else through here. And then um, if you want to sort the smalls, um, like I said, um, you can, I'll show you, I'll show you when I get to that step about how to do the smalls and um, se separate it from the, the frass and the, um, all the rest of the dead body parts and stuff like that. But first, you got to start with this dirty thing right here. And that's what one of the bins is for. So, the best to have a trash can on standby. So, let me get that ready. And a trash bag. trash in here I need to throw away already. I need to get rid of this bag. And I'm going to be throwing an old egg crate into here. And it's a safe space in your trash. You line the egg crate up um, so that they fit inside each other and they stack. So for this, I'm going to... purpose of this video I'm gonna do it from on the ground so I don't hurt my back if you have a table or something like that it'll be good for you to do it that way but what you do is you just take the egg cartons and shake them off into the empty container make sure you get all the babies off of there and any other Worms and stuff. Now you're going to set that to the side. I'm going to put these inside of a different container while I do this. So that if I miss anything, it doesn't get loose. But continue to do that. And 
That's what I mean by stacking them in the same direction so that they fit inside of one another. And that way you can stack them and um, throw it all the way at once and it'd be a, a smaller profile. And this bin is way overdue um, cleaning. Usually I do with a mask on, but for the purpose of this video, I told you guys I would do a video. You won't be able to hear me if I had a mask on, but if I start sneezing, it's because of the frass and stuff on, this, uh, on these roaches. And I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. And then once I get everything emptied out, I'm going to come back on camera and show you guys what it looks like before I start sorting. Alright, so after you get all the egg cartons out, you're going to have two different bins. The bin should never look like this. This is way past due on cleaning. This is what I shook out. From the bin and that's what was inside of the bin at the bottom um there's still a lot of dubia in here when i get to this point um i put two two or three fresh egg crates in here and then i shake this up and then most of the adults are gonna um get stuck onto the egg carton but for this one it's time to start doing the sorting on this one so that's where we're gonna pick back up all right so i'm about to get the air carton i keep plenty of extra air carton um don't forget guys stay tuned i will be um knocking the bottom out of these cages i got these cages completely feed they're six foot cages um they have two heat sources so i'm gonna change the lighting up in here um so i'm gonna keep one of the heat sources and then replace that one with a uh like probably like a three foot three or four foot uvb but just gonna knock this bottom half off because it's got a lot of water damage and then I'm gonna replace the bottom part and then it's gonna be pretty much a brand new cage. But I'm gonna get some of these and I keep a lot of supplies. All that stuff up there is full of supplies. I got deli cups, a whole bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, these got doobie in there as well. If you wanted to at this point you could uh, set up a different bin and that way when when you get the adults situated you can put them away right away as you go if I need more I'll come get more but right now I mainly just need three for this this one here like I said I put a like three in here upside down When I say upside down, one side is more smooth than the other side. I put the rough side down so they have more grip. And then what I do is that's gonna make them in a frenzy. And then we look for a place to hide, and then we'll start going inside of here like that. make it a little bit easier but there's no way to get away from having to hand pick some out um this was the old air cartons i'm gonna stack them all up so i can throw it away easily Now I still have plenty of space. But I'll let them do their thing. 
um, and I come and check periodically and dump whatever is on there off, shake it up again, and then by the time I get to this bin, after everything else is done, I just hand pick the rest of them out and throw all the, the dead bodies and stuff away. But right now, I'll take the bigger pieces out that fell through and I was shaking the egg cartons. So I'll shake them off good, make sure there's no babies on here because the babies like to congregate on here. everywhere <laughs> and before I turned the camera off last time I mean right after I turned it off I start sneezing right away in a little bit I have a fan right there that I turn on to get the stuff from sticking in my face and it blow towards the other other way when you start seeing a bunch of this tore up egg carton that's from the cleaner crew there's too many cleaning bugs up in there They like nest inside of the carton. So yeah, let's get the bigger one. shake it. And like I said, all of, everything that's smaller than the hose is going to fall through. Uh, it's not going to be 100% accurate. Some of them might latch on to something else and not fall through. But the majority of them are going to go through and collect on the bottom. And then if you have your other bin already set up, which I'm about to do right now, that's going to be the new bin right there. Stack the egg cartons opposite of one another so the sides that look alike are facing one another. holes in between instead of them interlocking with each other like this So this is going to be my, my new bin here. 
what I do with these is I apply pressure to both sides. So they stay in the position that I put them in. And then I just bring them over here. And then I do a couple of them. I cut them, I break them in half. And that's the side that I'm going to set the food on. So just find the middle point and just break them in half like this. And those get set up the same way as the other ones. So this is what it looked like from the top. One more, can, one more half can probably fit right there, and then uh, there's a lot of space right here on the side. You see it? I've got more that I'm gonna put on the side right there. I could probably squeeze two. I'm just gonna put one. And then I'm going to break this one in so I can make that a little bit more tighter where I'm going to put the food in. It's more of a tight fit. You know, space over here. I'm just leaving these ones like it is right now. But that's pretty much a new bin. Uh, this one don't have any holes in it, so I'm probably gonna uh, leave the top off of this one. Um, they can't climb this high. The mill probably flutter a little bit, but I'm just gonna leave this one open until uh, I'll build a new. I actually have been like that that I need to redo the um, screens on I try to use double sided tape but it's coming up loose but we gotta redo these I gotta hot glue it and then I'll probably move the colony into that so yeah as I'm sorting it like I said what's left in here should be the largest in the adults and I'm just gonna throw all these in here you can still see a little baby a couple babies holding on any old males like that I'm putting into the feeder bin so I force those through And this is where that detailing come in um, as well. If you wanted to do um, a higher female ratio, ratio. So if you wanted to do like five females to one male, you could do it at this time. But I'm not getting into getting that deep into this sort. Didn't really want to do the sort at all. But I told you guys I was gonna do it, so I'm getting it out the way. And if you want to go into more detail, like I said, you can. So you can see a couple of them holding on. 
and what's going to be left up here is like it's a couple carcasses and um, probably pieces of egg carton like that. And once you get all the live ones out, you throw just throw those stuff away. And this is a little trick that I told told you guys a long time ago. Um, if you use latex gloves, they don't the um, doobie roaches don't stick to your hands. Like, see how they gripping? If you use latex gloves, they don't hold on like that. And the reason I'm not just taking this whole thing and pouring it is because I got these dead bodies to still deal with. You can actually take the dead bodies out first if you wanted to and then dump everything in here at once. But sometimes you can mistakenly put um, dead the carcasses back in there with the live ones. Just some dead bodies now. Tap it down so the, so the ones that are sticking on the bottom can fall off. Let me just take this out of there. I had tape around here because these uh, Sterilite has a little bit of grip on it. I don't know if the camera could pick it up. You put tape around here so that the roaches can't cling on to it it's on the sides. Size. I need to redo the tape. But you just do that cycle again until you're done with this bin. I guess I'll do the rest of these.
Hey, if you don't want to deal with feeders and stuff like that, you probably shouldn't breed bearded dragons. Because you're not going to make any money if you're not breeding any insects on your own. Um, I'm actually going to um, do a video. I've got to buy a new camera and a computer. But I'm going to do a video um, of breeding super worms and crickets as well. I did it before. Um, but to get that process on the video, I need a storage a storage card or a SIM card. Um, so once I get a real camera and a computer, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do that process for you guys and show you show you all the steps. But do be a pretty easy. If you got like a reptile facility, I say get lobster roaches too. You can do red runners as well. Red runners smell a little bit more. It's more like more like crickets, a little bit, a little bit worse. But definitely, you need to be breeding something, something for your babies to eat. Unless you got a real, real good connection on feeders, or else you're cutting into your profit more than what you need to. I'm about to get some gloves. Yeah, I'm gonna get some gloves on now, guys. It's starting to make my hands itch. Get a little welt. So. Like I said, guys, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. Um, I'm gonna hopefully soon I can buy a camera and get a computer so I can um, do different types of videos. Right now I'm doing doing it all off my phone. Um, I'll probably still do videos off my phone as well, but it's gonna be certain projects that I need my um, camera with a SIM card to do. Um, it's pretty much like a time lapse type thing. Well, not time lapse, but over over a long period of time, so I can I can show like a dragon breeding. I can save it, and then once a female grab it and lay eggs, I can start recording back on that same SIM card. And then when those babies hatch, I can do the full process. And my goal is to do the from breeding all the way to shipment, and then see if I can get the customer to do a video when they receive it. And then put it all together as a full process. Um, I haven't seen any videos like that, and I would like to do that. I kind of do that now, but it's, it's all it's always cut up, and there's other videos in between the videos. So I, I I show the breeding, and I do a video on the breeding. And then I show different females laying eggs, and then I show eggs hatching, and then I show myself packing up the lizards, or the, the lizards growing to six inches, and then um, I, I, I post on here when, they, when they're available, and then I do the whole um, packing it up and shipping it off. So I kind of do it now, but it's not all in one video.
you know, I want to give all in one video uh, so you guys can get the full effect on what, what the full process um, in, entails. And I'll put dates in there too, like the date that they bred, the date that the female laid, the date that the baby started hatching, how long or how many days it took for all the babies to come out, and um, how long it take them to get to a size that I'm comfortable shipping out. And the day that I put it for sale, how long it takes for the sale to happen, and then the customer receiving it. And then I'll probably revisit and do like customer updates. Uh, I think that would be very, very cool. I'm, I'm wheezing a little bit because I was sneezing. Comment down below if you think that's a cool idea. Also, could do um, cage builds and stuff on there as well in that in that format. From because a lot of the cages is gonna take more than one day to put together, especially with my work schedule. So it'd be nice to be able to reach to go back to that place where I finished off. Finished off. I probably do um, like the daily videos on my phone. I'm getting ready to update my up, upgrade my phone as well. So. Um, I'll probably uh, do like the quick videos, the key key videos every day, and then every every so often I'll do a more edited video of a long process type thing and throw it in there, so you guys get some um, higher quality and um, more more of a full full type video. Nothing I'm playing with in my head, different ideas. When you're doing this and you, you find the males and they and their wings are getting beat up like that, go ahead and feed those off. Those males are getting old and getting ready to die. If you got females that look crippled, feed those off. Tedious work, but it needs to be done, and it saves money, like I said before. Bluegill roaches are probably one of the most expensive feeders, especially if you're not producing your own. Like if you buy from local pet stores, a adult female like that, probably a dollar or two. If you buy the largest, they probably like 75 cents each. If you got one dragon, they eat one adult dragon and probably eat like seven to ten adult or uh, large roaches a day with 75 cents times 10 was that seven dollars and 50 cents for one day that's that's almost what you pay for a meal imagine doing that every day for weeks along with greens and vegetables Like I said, I'm, I'm planning on getting more ball pythons. Um, then I have a buddy that breed rats, and he's thinking about expanding the rats to go in the business of breeding several rats too. He has a pretty good size. He has enough to feed his collection, and then feed off, uh, freeze off some for a later time. So he has a good amount for his own collection. But um, we want to go bigger than that so we can actually make more profit have them pay for themselves as well because of the bags of food i got a i got a deal i think it's uh 28 for a 40 pound bag which is probably like 
$12 cheaper than most other bags or get them from anywhere else. And I probably could get it even cheaper than that if we buy more, so. It's a lot of things I'm working on, guys, so just bear with me, stick with me, and I'll try to keep you guys entertained while, while I figure things out. And you guys can see me grow, so you guys can grow with me. The more I grow and stuff like that, the more things I can do with you guys. Um, as far as like giveaways and I was talking to another guy, he breeds, um, he breeds bearded dragons as well. I've been on him for a long time. His name is Alan from Wolf Type Dragons. And I was playing with the idea of um, actually personally deliver um, dragons to people and video the whole thing. So imagine I, I filmed the whole process from breeding Breeding a bearded dragon, the dragon's hatching, I sell a bearded, bearded dragon, I uh, package the bearded dragon up, then I ship it out, and then when I ship it out there, I meet the the FedEx driver at the door and, and take the, the person who bought it out for dinner and talk to him and stuff. I think that would be super cool to do. Or even start doing giveaways. I live in Las Vegas right now, so um, do giveaways every probably like once a month. Try to fly somebody out, give them a room for two days, um, for two people, and take them out to dinner, show them some stuff in town, talk to them, bring them to my where I keep my reptiles, show them around, and let them see what I have here, and also experience the town at the same time. Who wouldn't want a trip to Vegas? Not there yet, but that's what I'm working towards. So with everything that I shook off the egg carton in the main bin, and that's just fell through um, this size hole. The males are more slender than the females, so a lot of the males went through as well. So I'm gonna take some of these males out soon, and with the with the beta group, maybe that a female in there, she's a longer, slender female. She's here. a bunch of males in here. I'm going to take the healthier, healthier looking ones and I'm going to throw them in there as well. This is a fresh male. You can tell he's fresh because he's a lighter color. Um, in the wings. Once they're, they've been a male for a little bit, their wings are not dark. I'm only gonna throw about 10 of them in here. And like I said, if you wanted to, you can go through and detail it. Um, I think the correct ratio is one male for five females. Um, I would probably do 
um, three to one. Being three females for one male. Being a slender female. But while we've been doing this, remember those egg cartons I, I placed on the bottom of the original bin. It's now it should be full with roaches on the other side. Maybe it's full with beetles as well. But I'm gonna dump it in here. Do the same for all of them. Shake it again, make them frantic, they're gonna look for somewhere to hide, they're gonna hide inside the egg crate, and I'm gonna repeat that as many times as possible. And then once I it's less and less start getting on the bottom there, I gotta go through manually and pick out all the all the adults, and then I have to make a sacrifice with the rest of them. I either put it in the bin, let the let whatever is in there grow out some, and some of the babies might um baby dubia might grow up, but in this case this bin has been overgrown too long so what I'm going to do is um, once I hand pick everything I'm going to do I'm going to put these in there again and get as many babies out as possible you know, with the same process and then after like two or three times of shaking these off I'm going to just throw, throw everything else in the bag and freeze it and throw it in the trap I'm not gonna speak about this bin anymore. That's the full process on that bin. Um, and these over here, this is gonna get added to by this stuff. I'm gonna put this back over here and do the same process. There's a new bin. That's a new bin now. Got roaches in it. And I'm gonna add some food to here. Right now I'm just gonna probably put uh I'm not gonna actually out of vegetables, but tomorrow I'm gonna come in and put vegetables in it. Um yeah, I forgot I was supposed to bring some today. And I gotta work. I forgot, but uh but yeah, that's a com that's what it's gonna look like at the end. Um, after this process here, which is pretty much done, let me take these adults out and I can show you the steps so I can hurry up and end this video and continue cleaning it off the video. But you guys will have all the steps to do. You just have to repeat it until you get to, to the um, results you want to sort, uh, how, um, how, how far you want to sort it down to. Struggling to go in. So 
So for the sake of this video, so we got everything that we needed to out of there. Now we're gonna pour this content back into an empty bin. Then put this back. Then we're gonna get the, the smaller sort of hole. Just put a bin with the smaller holes in it. Put it in that container. Then we're gonna pour these in there. And all the smaller stuff is gonna fall through. And all the bigger stuff is gonna be on the top. falling through there's tape along the inside here as well that need to be replaced um, that keep the roaches from climbing up on the inside same as it did on the outside I'll turn the flash on so you guys can see, but made it worse. So that's all of the babies falling through. The babies and the beetles. There's more beetles than it is babies. But like I said, the um, the, the baby beetle giants to eat those as well. They're just a little bit harder shell. And any females and this. In this part, I'm going to be picking out manually and put it in there. I think that's the only female left. You can start manually picking this stuff up too and throw it in the way. The babies like to stick to it, so you have to look out for them. tedious work here. If you clean your uh, your bins more more uh, frequent than what I did on this one, this one was neglected bad. Um, the they they won't have time to make the egg carton shed like this. You don't have to deal with this. But yeah, that's the full process that I, I do. Um, you just have to repeat it until you get everything sorted that you need to be. Um, so I showed you guys the four steps. Um, it's just not going to be completed on this video. I'm going to do it off camera so I go a little faster without trying to explain everything. But basically, that was the full, that was the full container right there. Took all the used egg crate with the dubia shook them off into this container so i got all the uh, egg crate stacked and out of there and i put it in the trash um the contents that was left in there i put into the bigger sort so i can get the larges and the adults um away from the mediums the smalls and as much trash as possible and then once i got those sorted i poured everything back into here and then I use the smaller sorter bin to um, pour everything back into so I can get the babies and the beetles sorted from the mediums and the adult males. And like I said, you can pick through these males and add them to like just a male feeding bowl or some feeding bin. And then just all the males that you want to feed off. Um, but yeah, that's the full process. So this is going to have all the babies in it, babies and beetles, and that stuff that's left on the bottom of there. Um, I'm going to shake these out a couple more times and repeat the process of sorting, and then I'm going to manually get all the adults out of there, and then I got to make a decision on if I want to 
put all the uh, stuff left on the bottom into a different container and just feed the container for about a month or two and then let the baby that's left in there grow up and then sort those at the time that they're a little bit bigger so it's easier and then I'll put this bin um, I'll clean it make sure the screen is all intact and have it set up for the next time I do a cleaning but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video I told you guys I'll do a sorting video for you guys I did a couple back in the day but I'm pretty sure those are demonetized now because I have music playing in them. But uh, this is a new one. Uh, it's not going to be demonetized. And hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, you can comment down below. Or if you have any, uh, like, if you want to have a detailed conversation about it, either email me or Instagram message me. I prefer Instagram message. It's a little bit more to, easy to communicate on there than it is by email. All right, so if you have Instagram or Facebook, that'll be the two easiest way to contact me. And it's easier for me to respond on those two platforms. So if you don't, email will work as, work as well. But I prefer either Facebook Messenger or Insta, Instagram um, direct message. All right, guys, I'm in the video here. I'm going to hurry up and get this done so I can get home and eat and get ready for bed. Alright guys, I'm out. Peace.